I'm Paul S.G. and this is my masterclass for DNB Academy and I'm going to show you how to recreate this jastic sound. I prepared one track and I prepared a couple of samples, a couple of sounds. Um, we will listen to this together right now and then I'm gonna break down all the elements, tell you what I've done um, for it to make sound like it does right now and then we're going to progress the track a little further. We go into arrangement, but yeah, let's hop into it. So yes, this is the idea for now. It's called Tick Tick. Um, I always think it's important to have a project title. Um, and I actually recommend to think about good track titles while you're creating music. Because as with every other product in the supermarket, if it's a shit track title and a great track that doesn't really add up, it doesn't really work, so I recommend to think about, I actually have um, a list of track titles on my phone here. Um, every time I think of something great, have an idea for a track title, I'm actually writing it down and then um, create the music for it afterwards. So it's like when you have a track title, you can visualize it, think about something, uh, think about how it could sound um, and then you know it kind of works together at least this works for me it's just an just an idea for you to maybe think about maybe it works for you as well so um it all started with this sample by an obscure finnish electronica um music thing i filtered it down and it's just a very small loop out of the whole recording. The way it's looped, the way it's looped, um, it already gives you this build up feeling because it's a relatively quick loop with only a couple of notes. Um, Jastix music is based heavily on sampling. Um, over the years, I started to um, create samples myself, which means I'm playing stuff in MIDI, layering, resampling, and then treating treating my creation like a sample. Um, so you still have this sampled sampled vibe. Um, so yeah, this the musical element. Everything around is built on. This is this was the very first element for me to start the track with. Um, then I played some strings. They quite quite quiet. I'm bringing them up a little bit. This is made with Native Instruments uh, Symphonic String Series. It's a contact instrument. Shouts going out to my guys over in Berlin, Native Instruments. Um, if you want to spend some money on plugins, definitely go and check out Native Instruments. Then I played another sound on top. This is low pass filtered. 
actually some mallets. But I played them like a percussive instrument. And I also played some pads underneath. So now we have one, two, three, four elements playing to create this uh, intro sound, basically. And this is the basis of the of the melody in the intro right now. So I'm sure we'll we'll add some more stuff later on. Let's look into the drums for a minute. Also, uh, there is quite sparse so far. In this case, I used some... Well, first of all, I sampled... Um, Bobby Bird's uh, Hot Pants. This is a, a track that's been released alongside something that's called Bonus Beats. It's an old recording, I think, from the 70s. You can look it up. Don't nail me down on this. I'm gonna extend and um, unwarp so you can listen to the whole thing. As you can see, it's quite a long, long thing. Uh, popular within uh, early days of hip hop because it's pure beats with a few sparse vocals on top. Let's listen to it. And you can see where the loop markers still are. This is where I, the section I looped. So this one's called uh, Hot Pants. It's uh, very popular in drum bass. It used to be a lot more popular in the 90s, um, early drum bass stuff, um, also in old school jungle. Um, I mean, the jazzic sound basically consists of old funky breaks with um, with samples over the top. So we still love to go back to old funk breaks. We're not the biggest fans of synthetic drums. Obviously, um, you can get a lot more power into your drums, but um, for us, it's all about the vibe of a musical track. And, of course, there are certain things you can do to make a sound cleaner. So I'm going to delete this uh, Hot Pants original channel again and show you what I've done. And it sounds like this. So this is um, the same sample I showed you before. It's on plus seven on the transpose. Um, I'm obviously working in um, Live 10 by Ableton. So there's a Nice option in here um, when you work with audio to time stretch. Um, I have it on the on the beat section, and um, yeah, plus seven. That's basically what it is. How did I treat it? I used utility. It's within the audio effects in Ableton. With utility, you can um, basically treat audio samples that are recorded in stereo with different levels and different instruments uh, on both channels. So for example, I show you the st stereo now. You can already hear it opens up to stereo. This would be only the right channel. And this is exactly the setting I used before. And the left channel of it sounds a little harsher on the shuffle and the ghost notes. You can hear it's a lot more abrasive, a lot more aggressive, a lot sharper. So I'm going back to the to the right side of the recording, and this is spread evenly about uh, above uh, both channels now. Let me actually undo all the other effects I've been using. So uh, next on was an EQ. I cut off quite a bit of the low end. This is uh, where the snare sits in this break, and you can hear it's quite resonant. 
So I took this down a little. And I'm using Transit, um, Transit, Transit Master by Native Instruments. Once again, very simple free knob plugin. And I gave it a bit more attack. So this is on 25%, just to bring out the transients. You can hear it's getting sharper and sharper. But um, yeah, I have it on 25%, so it's more subtle. And the auto filter was paused by now, for now, so this is something I might play on later on. Something you can also do with an EQ, but I find it I find it easier if you already EQ'd your sample, in this case drum breaks, if you um, add another auto filter just to, um, to have this kind of one knob solution. Because as you all know, there's so many knobs and buttons and parameters that you can change to change the sound. So um, yeah, I think applying or I find applying a filter in order to um, to manipulate the sound later on is uh, is just easier than adding another EQ or trying to do everything with one EQ. Um, I also use um, Fab Filter uh, for EQing. In this case, I stuck to the Ableton in-house um, plugins. Yeah, so this is the hot pants. Underneath we got a file called Paul Drums. This is something um, that I resampled and saved and this is now part of... <laughs>